and welcome to another great episode of the Cryptcast. Joining me today is the lovely Zay Overseer. I'm running out of opening bits. <laughs> but anyways, uh, how you doing? How you doing, Zay? I'm all right. How are you, Jay Chippers? I am doing all right. I'm doing all right. I've bought in a, re- a lot of games recently. Uh, I've been. I've been playing a lot of Switch lately, because what else to do in quarantine, you know? <laughs> and I'm going camping tomorrow, so that should be fun. Yeah. And uh, I heard you did some other things uh, recently, and I heard you watched a little show by the name of Evangelion. Yes, I did, because somebody <laughs> for <laughs> fucking peer pressured me into doing it. I didn't peer pressure you, I just influenced you. <laughs> <laughs> have you watched Davey yet? 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 I wasn't like that. I was just like, a uh, progress update. <laughs> How far are you on Ava? How far are you? <laughs> Look, the last podcast we had, uh, we, m- me and Clutch were harnering on you. Like, you literally have no excuse in quarantine not to watch it. So, we, we got that done. Yeah, okay, fine. Okay, all jokes aside, yes, I finally did finish it. I watched the full series and end of Ava. Not in the order you're supposed to, apparently, a.k.a. the order in which they came out. Yeah. For those of you that don't know uh, about, you know, the whole Ava thing, is that uh, Ava, the last two episodes, episodes 25 and 26, are very, very negatively received by fans. Like, they got a lot of flack uh, for how they ended. Which, to be honest, they it, it ended okay. It just could have been a lot better. So, the end of Ava rectified that with giving us more explanation on stuff and also some extra content. I was so confused by the ending until I watched End of Ava. <laughs> I mean, End of Ava still kind of... Then, then, then it cleared it up. There's still a lot of confusing things about End of Ava and Evangelion as a whole, but like... Oh, I had plenty of questions after at the end, but... Yeah, but... I got the gist of what happens. Yeah, and basis of it is that you can take Evangelion, like the message of Evangelion, a whole number of ways. That That's, that's the end message, is that you can take it so many ways. But you know, good art should always do. Yeah, Hideaki Anu is... He's an interesting figure, if I'm gonna be honest. What the fuck is going on in that man's brain? <laughs> a lot of dark shit. <laughs> but a lot of artistic shit. But, uh... Yeah, uh... Overall, what did you think of, uh, Ava? I mean, what do you want me to say? It's considered one of the greatest TV shows of all time. One of the greatest pieces of animation to has ever graced the earth. And me? Yeah, it's it's really good. <laughs> I mean, that's a fair stance. Uh, yeah, I feel like... I mean, there are things that just... I won't deny that it's a fantastic show. There are just other pieces of media that resonate with me more. So it's not one of my favorite shows of all time, but it's still really good. Yeah, and that's fair. like all the all the characters are three-dimensional. They all ha- they're all interesting. They all have a bun- like a bunch of layers to them. Like the animation and the fight scenes are incredible. Like Jesus, the animation in End of Ava. I didn't know animation could get that good. Especially for 97. That came out in the 90s, bro. And it looks super good. That, that... Ah, I can't even... Ah, I, I want to avoid spoilers, so I can't even say why. But let's just say there's a hand motion in that movie that's just flawless. <laughs> I honestly got... Was very late to the Ava train, uh, if I'm going to be honest. Like, it took me a few years to get into it and actually watch it. And I was super confused going in. Because I only went in for the memes, you know? (laughs) But it's a really good, it's a really good show. It's a really good franchise. 
it leaves you one of the I mentioned I've mentioned this a bunch of times, but one of the things I love most about it is it it has you feeling conflicted constantly, guessing what really is the right thing to do. Yeah. Like the best example I can give is in episode four, I think. The first time Shinji decides to leave Nerve co- Nerve forever just to like just to like get the hell out of there because he's absolutely hating his time there and he's and it's like fucking with his head and stuff and and piloting the robot is like stressing him out and giving him all this anxiety and you feel so bad for him but by the time like the episode is over and he returns to nerve and it's treated like this big happy moment where he's decided to stay like you feel conflicted because like half of you is just like yeah shinji he's staying hooray and the other half of you is just like oh god no shinji's staying (laughs) <laughs> like like half of you is just like yeah beat those angels do the right thing and the other half is just like shinji get the fuck out of there right now i i, I was the conflicted type of like yeah pro- he probably shouldn't be going and doing all that when he's a stressed out fucking kid he's a little fucking teenager with a lot of mental issues yeah but at but the same time the- at at the same time Fucking man up. Get in the fucking robot. <laughs> and the show makes it very clear that he is the only one who can pilot it. Yeah. Man, that first episode was just so good. Like, the first episode of Ava might be my favorite episode. It was so tightly written. It was just, like, the amount of story and, like, how how effective it is and making you care about ev- all these characters in just 22 minutes is masterful. Yeah. Now we come to the important question. Who's your favorite character and who is best girl? Okay, here we go. Here I, here I go again having to remember fucking Japanese names. <laughs> Not best girl as in like a uh, waifu, but like just best girl throughout the whole show. Misato is her name, right? Yes, and she is best girl. <laughs> she's I I love Misato yeah. so much. She's my favorite. She's my favorite character. Can't even ex- properly explain why. She's just so she's just a ton of fun to just watch. She's a she's funny, she's a badass. Uh she's mm-hmm. caring. Good character. She's really caring. She's the only one who gives a shit about Shinji. Who do you think was the most unbearing character? Like character you could that you could care less if they died off or if they just I don't know. In the beginning, I'm going to stress this, just stress this. <laughs> In the beginning, <laughs> I know where you're going with this. Asuka. Oh my god. I I mean, I feel the same way because like I fucking hated Asuka going in. I hated her character so much. She was such a bitch. And even at even in the end she's like kind of like eh. like I feel more for Ray than I do Asuka. Oh, I felt that first episode, I I felt so goddamn bad for Ray. That's the, like the biggest thing I took away from that first episode. Just like how bad I felt for this poor girl who's like who had to be wheeled into a hospital to go fight another giant monster only for the fucking building to get attacked and her her to fall to the ground off her fucking hospital wheeler. Yeah, that shit. That shit's crazy. And you know what? I'm gonna I I hate to call the dude out like this, but I had a I have a friend who is a big fan of Ava already, and like I would sometimes like go to him and talk about how I was feeling with Ava. And he's, I already mentioned this when we watched End of Ava, but he's to, he was totally that guy who was just like, who like, like, I, I said that I felt really bad for Ray in that first episode, and he was just like, oh, just you wait, you're gonna feel so much worse for her later. And like, when I, when I brought up the question to him of just like, I wonder, like, because I was curious, like, why are the angels attacking Nerve? Because I knew there had to be a reason. And... And his react and his response was, "Oh, you'll find out." I hate those kind of people. That's the worst. Those are the worst people in the Ava uh, community. Kind of, they kind of set your expectations too high, don't they? Those kind of people. Yeah, and I honestly felt that when I uh, when I first watched Ava, because you know, like I said, it took me a while to actually get into it. 
And then when I finally came around to it, like I, I experienced those kind of people and then I watched it and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, honestly, though, this the anime does have those kind of, you know, twists and turns throughout the whole se- franchise. Mm-hmm. And fucking like I make fun of I make fun of him. I make fun of people like that. But like, I, I've been that guy before. I'll be honest, I have too. Like, the biggest example that comes to my mind is Cabin in the Woods, where if somebody had never seen it, I'd totally be like, dude, you have to watch this movie. I'm not going to tell you what happens, but you got to watch it. Oh, I've done that to a ton of people. <laughs> I did that to someone for Madoka Magica. <laughs> yeah, like like something like that, too, where they're just like, where you, where you, where you see them just like c- completely ob- oblivious to wh- how what actually happens. Just kind of like, and you just kind of look at, and you just kind of like, have this smug grin to yourself, like, oh, 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 he has no idea. I was exactly like that for Madoka Magica, because it comes off as this, you know, really cute magical girl show. Then it just, it's fucking dark. Uh, like, I'm not going to say anything. It's just, it, it, it's fucking crazy. I know all about Madoka Magica, but I still got to watch it. And I really do want to watch That's it. That's our next watch party. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> there aren't a lot of there aren't a lot of animes that grab my interest, but that one certainly has. Yeah. Those are the kind of show like shows that I like have those kind of twists like what <laughs> that make you go like what? No, nah, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Yes. I know what you mean. Can I change my answer from uh, Asuka? Yeah. Like that was just in the beginning, but later on, I became I I I ended up liking her. Um, but one guy that I didn't give a sh- shit about from beginning to end, because I don't even remember his name, Misoto's ex boyfriend, Misato. Oh, yeah, KG. Yeah, huh. I guess that was his name. I don't remember. Yeah, I, I did. I really didn't like him. He came off as a fucking. He came off as a misogynist, but like also was caring. Uh, he was just so confusing. You know what I mean? Yeah, he was. I understood his. I understood who he was, what his character was. So like, I still didn't really particularly like him. Yeah. Also, he did kind of in the in his first appearance. Like as soon as shit started going down, he got in the plane and fucked off. Yeah. So that was a bad, and that didn't that that was not a good introduction. And I think everyone, and the reason why I asked, like, who you just dislike is because the most universally hated character is Shinji's dad. Like, it's no contest. Like, Shinji's ja- dad is a fucking asshole. He was a total piece of shit and a horrible father, but I can't even bring myself to hate him that much because he's barely on screen. He's a horrible person. He did a lot of horrible shit. He committed so many war crimes. And all, and the whole time, the whole time, I was thinking like, he just wants to protect humanity, and he'll do whatever it means to do it. But then you find out his real motivation, and you're just like, oh fuck you, dude. <laughs> yeah, like at first, like I didn't fucking like seal that the that team uh, that was conspiring against him. But like after a while, I'm like, wow, these guys are really the good guys. Well, technically. And Shinji's dad is a fucking asshole. <laughs> there aren't a lot of good guys in Ava, really. <laughs> even even Shinji has done like a lot of fucked up shit. <laughs> like I I related a bit a little bit too much to Shinji. <laughs> as long as you don't masturbate to someone in the hospital, you're good. <laughs> Which apparently is one of the most like. <laughs> I've ranted about it because, like, people, apparently, that's, like, one of the most... It's, like, so important and, like, it's, like, so important and integral and, like, uh, only people of this kind can understand. Yeah, you can't understand the deeper, like... The the deeper meaning behind it. When really, honestly, I don't think uh, Hideaki Anna was going that deep with that, that one little scene. He's not going to go that deep with a fucking child masturbating to someone in in a fucking hospital. I think he just put it there for shock value. And I'm sure, like, it had some meaning to it. But if you actually ask uh, 
Hideaki Anno about it, he'd be like, yeah, I just put it there for shock values sort of thing. <laughs> God, that reminds me of that. Reminds me of... I'm going to find his name. ProZD! That reminds me of his skit where, like, or, or like, he's making fun of people who are just like, oh, like, like, like the the guy is watching anime is just like, oh, wow, this, this character is, like, cleavage is really, like, like, over the top for some reason. Her breast size is unrealistic, and the guy runs in, and he's like, um, actually, the fact that her clothing is all... It, it like is so revealing is because it expresses her deep emotions on like, and he just goes off and it cuts to the creator of the series just in an interview and he's just like yeah i, I just wanted to see some titties <laughs> but yeah uh like those kind of people are just whack but uh and i kind of like sh- i kind of like shows like, like that where where the creator is like putting like deep meaning in uh, a lot of messages in his shit and then he just make fucking shit posts everything else. <laughs> like it's fuck. Those creators are kind of fucking great, mm-hmm. and I respect the hell out of that. Like they're not super serious, but they're also like fucking artistic as fuck. Anyways, moving on. Uh, because uh, we came down to the point that Ava's good. You should watch it. Uh, it's definitely not a gateway anime. Uh, I'll I'll say that because like I have seen people do that to people. Like, uh, use Evangelion as a gateway anime. Do you know what I mean by that? Yes, the as in, like, your first introduction to anime. Yeah. Even though Evangelion is meant to be a satire of an entire genre of anime. Yeah. Like, it's supposed to be I mean, satire of mech series, right? Technically, yes. The funny thing about that is that it went on to, like, influence a lot of sh- fucking mech anime. <laughs> right, but if you don't... If you if you start with Ava and you've never watched another mech anime, then you don't get the satire. Yeah, it's like it's it's like it's like showing somebody Spaceballs before they've watched Star Wars. <laughs> That's don't a do huge that. jump. <laughs> That's a huge jump. <laughs> like if you watched Ava before you watch a uh, Gundam Wing, you'd be so fucking confused because like uh. Because Evangelion's focused on the the characters more than the the actual action going on. Right. And the action being like with the giant robots. Which are technically which are technically aliens. Never actually seen a mech anime, so that that I'm I'm one of those (laughs) people that I was just making fun of. But (laughs) But like I understand the satire. The whole like like Japan had, had been spending decades, like like glorifying getting into a giant robot and fighting monsters, and then well, what's the creator's name? Hideaki Anno. Yeah, Agnano just came comes in and got and was and just made the show to say like, guys, driving a giant mech and fighting monsters would suck. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I reminded of a Yahtzee quote when he talks about Spec Ops The Line, where he says, You have to like war shooters in order to play the war shooter long enough for the game to punch you in the face for liking war shooters. <laughs> this actually ties into what I said earlier that I've been getting a lot of games recently, is that I've been getting a little bit more into fighting games, but the only fighting games that I own are Smash, Kill a Kill, and uh, Blaze Blue which are really not well-received within the fighting community, in the fighting game community. Uh, Okay, I know one of them is bad. Another is a party game. What's wrong with Blaze Blue? I don't fucking know. People are just, like, mixed on that. I thought thought that was one of the super respected franchises. It's kind of got a mixed response from what I've seen. But, like, I love Tekken. I love Te- Tekken 7, and I wish it was on Switch, but I know that's never going to happen. <laughs> I've, only play- I- I've only played Tekken 7 uh, on my friend's PS4, uh, and it's a great game, and I wish I could play it again. But yeah, uh, I've put way too many hours in Smash. I've- I-, I play the Spirits mode more than anyone should. <laughs> it's just, yeah. I mean, my experience with fighting games is just Smash Brothers and Dragon Ball games. Yeah, fucking, like, Xenoverse. 
like and uh and fighters i want games more made like fighters uh because that's like the pinnacle of fighting games right now i i'm 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 most of my spirit experiences with budokai yeah budokai is really good i mean i love xenoverse here's the thing with like arena fighters like arena fighter games are like pretty mixed with like uh they there can be really good ones like budokai or there can be really bad ones like kill a kill <laughs> i'm i i wouldn't know let i'm I keep, I keep, I keep hammering home the idea that I don't play a lot of video games, but I'm, I, I stand up for arena fighters because the only ones I've played are either Dragon Ball and Naruto, and both of them are really good. So my, my worldview is kind of small. The thing is, the Naruto and Dragon Ball universe do, do it so well, while like other uh, fighters that do that don't really learn from them. They just like they have this world that they can make open like that and make it an arena and be like, oh, we can do that. And then they end up with something like the My Hero Academia o- arena fighter. It's not really good. <laughs> I've heard the horror stories about Jump Force. Ugh. Jump Force is also really bad, yeah. Oh, my God. Meanwhile, my 12-year-old self is like, like going crazy in my mind imagining of just like what if smash brothers was an arena fighter <laughs> oh my like? god <laughs> i mean i get i think sonic would just always win every fight and fucking uh <laughs> little mac would steal little mac off the stage <laughs> oh my god <laughs> i don't know how the hell he would work he would steal little mac i mean i was <laughs> uh. I was just imagining, like, most of these guys have had 3D games before. They could they could fit. <laughs> uh, not with the Smash universe. It, it, it's, it does so much better. It's just like a a flat thing. Yeah, but I'm not a... I, I have basically no... Exp- besides Smash. And that even that can be argued that that's not a fighting game. Uh, I have barely any experience with 2D fighters. Yeah. Like, the combos are too much for my tiny brain to handle. You want a really confusing as fuck uh, fight, 2D fighter game? Uh, look at Schoolgirls. It is so fucking frustrating, and I love Schoolgirls. <laughs> I got into Schoolgirls around the time when uh, Second Encore came out. And it's, it's so, it's, to this day, it's so fucking confusing. I I I will be honest. I button mash for a lot of things in Schoolgirls. I I've never touched a Street Fighter, but I can say with pretty pretty good confidence that I've played at least three Mortal Kombat games, and I was and I wasn't good at any of them. <laughs> like with those kind of fighters, where it's just like you know the flat screen like that, and it's not uh arena. The non arena fighters, the two D fighters, those are the ones where you can just you know button mash. With something like Smash, though, it, it's very precise. Mm-hmm. I mean, the thing that I, I... One of the things that I love about Smash and what's sep- the biggest thing that separates it from other fighting games is that there's no health bar. Technically, yeah. Like, it's just a percentage thing. Yeah, so you could... Theoretically, you could fight somebody at 0% and you're at 100% and you could still win. Oh, yeah. Especially with like overpowered characters like a uh, fucking Ridley, it's not like uh, I I I I know the same can be said for other fighting games, but I think like if if you're playing fucking Mortal Kombat and like the other guy is still at full health and you have and you're like one punch away from <laughs> dying, it's just like yeah yeah dude you're <laughs> oh, fucked. God. I think the the closest thing to us to a health bar in Smash is the stamina mode. Mm-hmm. I fucking hate that mode. Uh especially when you're going against computers, like hard computers, because they'll just go ham on you. <laughs> yeah, I fucking, I fucking remember in the Ridley reveal trailer where, without explanation, they show him using his tail stab move on Link, and Link falls to the ground and explodes. And I'm just like, wait, what the fuck? What? That, that's not how yeah, Smash Yeah, they didn't works. explain that that was stamina mode. <laughs> 
Like, like that's not how Smash works. <laughs> I wish that's how Ridley's attack works. <laughs> he just fucking stabs you with his down B <laughs> and fucking obliterates you. <laughs> I, I, I was just like, wait, oh, that's, that's what it looks like when a character explodes, but it's not from falling off stage? It it was it just it was just weird. It was weird. I used to make I used to make fun of uh or groan at like uh Ridley mains and now I am a Ridley main. <laughs> I mean I'm I'm such a like like Smash Brothers. If I had to choose between uh the Dragon Ball games and Smash Brothers as my favorite fighting game, I I think I'd even though I've definitely played Dragon Ball games a lot more, I think I'd have to go with Smash Brothers. And we've played Smash at my house before. <laughs> yeah, that was a ton of fun. Yeah. And now I can't watch, I can't watch, I can't watch, you know how in anime, you know, the blasting off again thing, where a <laughs> character will get knocked into the sky, and they'll fly off, and there's a little twinkle? No matter, no, I can't, I can't watch scenes like that anymore without imagining in my head, GAME! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Team Rocket is just, just, they just got endgamed. Anyways, uh, there's another thing I wanted to talk about it. Uh, and like you talked about that you recently finished uh, Ava. I recently finished and am hoping for another season of Harley Quinn, uh, which is now on HBO Max. And a show that I also really want to watch. <laughs> it's super good. And uh, I would have watched it sooner if I did. If I didn't have such a hate for the DC Universe uh, service, because I do not give a shit about the DC Universe service, and it is dying, and I'm glad things are being ported over to HBO Max. I want another season of uh, Harley Quinn. It was super good. Uh, Season one was definitely better than season two. I'll just say that, like. Season two had its moments, but like it still was kind of eh. But like season one is definitely really good. It's a really, it's a really good, it's a really good change of like uh, Harley Quinn's character. I'll just say that they even ca- call out this uh that oh it's just to like uh give female empowerment and yes. But it's also just, you know, changing Harley Quinn's character and making her fucking badass. Like, she's already one of my favorite uh villains. Like, not just female villains. She's one of my favorite villains of all time. Wasn't the whole point of Harley Quinn's and Joker's relationship to you to be, like, abusive and not good? Yeah, it's toxic as fuck. And then, uh, basically the whole... A good chunk of the show uh, revolves around that, uh, revolves around her overcoming that. Yeah, good. That's what a Harley Quinn show should do. Yeah. And and people are upset? What? Well, they took it as, like, uh, she did a lot of the things she did in the show as just, like, e- female empowerment. Woo, fuck the man. Uh, but really, it was just character development. And... She's a badass coming out of it. Like, and the whole show is just revolving around her, uh, around that character development, but it's also her becoming the, the queen pin of Gotham. And I think that's pretty admirable for like a character with, for a villain that has no powers becoming the most dominant villain of all. I think that's awesome. Yeah, it does sound really awesome. That's like Batman becoming a. Uh, I mean, look at where Batman is. He's one of the most known uh, superheroes of all time, and he has no powers. Uh huh. He's just a fucking rich dude. As the Joker said in Harley Quinn, because yes, I've seen that one clip. She's just some boring rich asshole with parent issues. Basically, yeah. <laughs> I it only took me it only took me watching like three clips from the Harley Quinn show to, to be like I need to watch this. You know Batman's only listed as a supporting character. He's not like one of the main cast. And I think that's great. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. I think that's fucking great. 
Like, if anything, Gordon was more of a important character than Batman was in the series. Man, man, fucking people... DC loves Gordon, don't they? Yeah, it's funny because, like, in... He, they put him in starring role in so many yeah, things. Yeah, and then Harley Quinn, he's just a fucking depressed, drunk-ass uh, dad. But, uh, yeah. And I wanted to watch it uh, since it came out, but didn't want to fucking pay for the DC Universe service, so I waited till it came to HBO Max, because I knew it would. HBO is, uh, is owned by Warner Brothers, so I knew it was going to happen. And... Thank God it did because it's so good. I I, I was I was just sitting in that boat and just like because I'm I'm not getting it. I don't have HBO Max and I don't think we're gonna get it. So I was just like, I guess I gotta wait and hope that it'll air on television on some at some point. Because <laughs> that's what a lot of streaming shows do, right? Like like they 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 start out on like Netflix or something. Then like two years later, they'll start airing them on like Comedy Central or something. I, at least I know that's what happened to BoJack Horseman. The the only way I could see uh, Harley Quinn being on TV is on is on Adult Swim because it's made by th- those people. It's made by the Warner Brothers. It's made by the team behind so many shows. From what I've seen, that show would work so well on Adult Swim. It would be so successful. Speaking of another sh- show that's made by them, uh. Fucking Close Enough. Such a good show. Close Enough is what I wanted regular show to be. And it's made by the same people. It was originally going to be on Adult Swim. uh, Because, you know, regular show was on Cartoon Network. And then they wanted the more adult version to be on Adult Swim. But then it kind of... It came into like a... Like a dispute with like the rights to it like something along that but like uh and it just got stuck in development hell for so long and then it finally uh came out on hbo max and it's so good and i think it's gonna get another season because it's gotten amazing feedback but 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 J Chippers, a YouTube reviewer put out a video with the with and 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 was and it was titled "Close Enough" was a disappointment. How it it it's how how can it be good? Well, fuck those kind of people. Yeah, I have a HBO Max now. I have fucking three services. I'm I'm hurting myself more than I am entertaining myself, but like it's it's so good during this time. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, you gotta you gotta pick and choose your streaming services, man. Because like I feel like just one is enough to give you enough TV to last your lifetime. Yeah, I have fucking HBO Max, I have Netflix, and, and I have Disney Plus, and I just have so much content. <laughs> and then I watch YouTube on. On a regular basis. Uh, but speaking of YouTube, uh, I, I hope you're actually uh, enjoying these episodes on, on our YouTube. And uh, you maybe stick around and hit that subscribe button and uh, hit that bell. Do all those nice things. You can also go check out uh, Zay on his channel because he's going to be releasing some really cool shit soon. Uh huh. A certain finale that I've been building up for two years. <laughs> it's gonna be worth it. Yeah. It's gonna be worth it. I promise. But yeah. Uh, also, go follow our social medias and go check out our Discord. Uh, but yeah, thank you for joining us for this Cryptcast, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye bye. Oh, I just thought of an introduction bit. Hey,